David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Uh, you know, I've always been fond of, of new toys and gadgets. Uh, recently, I came across a new pen accessory that I, I thought was rather intriguing. Uh, and that accessory is called the Penwell. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and the features of the pen well, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. Uh, I won't be providing a writing sample because this is not a pen. Uh, it's something you use to store a pen, or rather keep it accessible on your desk. Uh, the pen well is the brainchild of Dan Keller, who is based out of a small town uh, of Wallace, South Dakota, which is a really small town. It has a population of 85. Uh, you know, as someone who's lived in large cities for my entire life, I'm not sure if I would find living in, in a town that small to be incredibly peaceful uh, or if I would get bored. You know, I'm not certain which. Uh, you know, I do love visiting small towns, though. I find them rather intriguing, and, and I think that they do have a tendency to have more of a sense of community than some larger cities. Uh, well, Dan had a problem. Uh, he was bothered that he couldn't use his capped pen with one hand. So after a lot of experimentation with design, he came up with a solution uh, and re recently launched this product. Uh, after coming across the pen well, uh, I reached out to Dan, who was kind enough to send me uh, one out for review. The pen well arrives in this metal tin. Uh, on the front here, it says uh, pen well, and then it also says make any pen a desk pen. The top comes off, uh, and inside there is some instructions printed on a coaster. Uh, I thought this was a really clever way to present a manual. Uh, it's simple, it's not overly wordy, uh, and then it also fits inside the box really well. Uh, it also acts as a little extra padding to the top of the tin to protect the product within. Speaking of the product within, uh, inside, nestled in this foam, is the pen well. Let me go ahead and get it out of here. Set that aside. Uh, here is the pen well. Uh, you know, it very much resembles, uh, you know, a, a base of a desk pen set or, or even an ink well. Uh, the pen well currently comes in three different versions. Uh, one is wood, uh, which is made from walnut. Then there is a brass model. Uh, and then this one here is the aluminum. Uh, and they're all produced in South Dakota. Uh, each of the models here are essentially identical except for the materials used. Uh, the walnut version actually has the Penwell name engraved here at the top, but the brass and aluminum ones that I have seen uh, do not. Uh, the concept behind the Penwell is that it will adhere to your desk with a method that we'll discuss here in a bit. Uh, and it uh, just turns about just turns about just about any pen in your collection into a desk pen. Uh, inside the hole here, there is a rubbery material. Uh, what you do is you take your pen and you insert the cap into the hole and the material grips it rather tightly. Uh, then once the pen is in there, in order to use your pen, you simply twist the barrel. Uh, one of the nice things about this design is that it will fit a, a surprisingly wide variety of pens. Uh, for example, here is a Cross Century Classic, which I reviewed last week, which is a very thin pen. And it fits in here just fine. Doesn't fall out at all. Uh, and then here's a pen that is significantly larger. This is a Classic Pens LB5. And you know what? That one fits in here just fine as well. Then uh, here is a, a Lamy 2000 that's more of kind of a mid-size pen. And that one, again, fits in here well. And then finally, here's one that uh, has a bit of an odd-shaped cap, uh, the Faber-Castell Loom. You can see here that the cap is rather large, uh, and then with the, it has a big bulky clip that kind of protrudes here on the end. But you can just see here that it fits just fine in here as well. Uh, there's actually a metal clip here in the bottom that you could take out if you wanted to adjust the, the uh, padding inside. Uh, you could even remove it completely, but I haven't felt the need to do so or adjust it uh, just yet. So, you know, let me put the LB5 in here, back in here just for a second. Now, once the pen is in here, it's very easy to then twist the barrel uh, and then separate it from the cap. And then when you're done, you can just twist it closed. Uh, that uh, you know, not all pens though have twist caps. Some are snap caps, uh, and how well those function with a pen well can vary. Um, take for example the 
uh, Lamy 2000 that we saw. This is just the stainless steel version. Uh, the capping mechanism on this one is rather loose. Uh, so it doesn't take very much effort to remove the barrel from the cap. So it just comes out very nice and easily. But then something like this Faber-Castell loom, we'll put that in there, um, it requires a significantly a higher amount of pressure uh, in order to un, un uh, cap the pen. So what you f I find you need to do is you actually with your two front fingers need to grip the pen a, further, a little bit further down on the cap and then you can uh, uh, pull out with the uh, end of your hand. So if you kind of hold the, the cap slightly and pull it out then it comes out just fine. So it, it really varies depending on the pen that you uh, have. Uh, you know, if you just pulled on this particular pen, the pen well be, would become unsecured from the surface. So let's talk about uh, the how it's secured. The pen well adheres to just about any smooth surface. Um, the base uh, is made of a micro suction uh, rubber material, which basically acts like thousands of little suction cups in order to help uh, this stick to your desk. You can see here a microscope picture of uh, all the little holes there. Uh, that in my experience this system is it's adequate um, it's not spectacular but it's not terrible by any means um, when you first receive your pen well uh, there is a, a plastic piece uh, on the bottom which you peel off and you simply put it down on a clean smooth surface and press down lightly you don't need to press down really hard uh, and then for the most part it'll stay put uh, if you play around with it or happen to unadhere it, then it has a tendency to not stick as well the next time you put it down. Uh, it's kind of a bit of a law of diminishing returns. Uh, the more you lift it off the surface, the worse it'll adhere. Uh, what happens uh, is that the little microscopic suction, suction cups become clogged with dust and things like that, uh, so that that will cause it to not stick as well. Um, you can see here uh, that there's just a bunch of junk which is accumulated on the bottom of mine. But all you need to do to remedy that is use a, uh, a damp cloth. I have like a, a micro uh, mesh towel here that I use to clean things. Use it like that, a damp cloth to wipe it off and let it dry for a second. And then you can see here, it looks a lot cleaner. Uh, and that uh, then it's back to new and will adhere much better. Um, while I haven't tested this over an extended period of time, um, I, I don't feel that the rubbery foam here will damage your pen in any way inside here. Uh, and I wouldn't have any issues with using this with any pen in my collection. Uh, and I don't get the feeling that the material on the bottom of the pen well will damage uh, a desk or surface either. You know, uh, as he's progressing with the product, uh, Dan's learning. You know, uh, originally he had uh, a nice little wax seal that was kind of on the uh, uh, on the side of this tin. This is what the wax seal looked like. Uh, that it actually kind of fit here right on the side. But he found that it would often fall off in shipping, so he's no longer doing that. Uh, when you're starting a company from scratch, uh, you got to work out stuff like that. Something that at first seems like a great idea ends up not working so hot once executed. Now, uh, this is a bit off subject, but this tin really reminded me of something uh, in my past. Uh, back in the early 2000s, I worked for a uh, startup computer peripheral company by the name of Razer. Uh, we were we, uh, manufactured uh, unique computer mice, mainly designed for gaming. Uh, the company went through a lot of ups and downs, but it is growing strong today. Uh, and I was there for basically the beginning of the company. Uh, I was employee number seven. Uh, here's actually one of my old business cards uh, that uh, it's was we had these metal cards made up which look kind of cool almost like bicycle license plates uh, but they were a bit of a pain to carry around uh, would go off in metal detectors uh, at the airport and things like that uh, my official title was uh, manager of customer euphoria uh, I didn't choose that it was given to me in essence it was my job to make sure our customers were happy but the, uh, the packaging for our product was uh, a tin very much like this, but significantly larger. And I remember sitting around a conference table deciding, you know, uh, whether or how we wanted to design the label and what adhesive to use and things like that. Um, but what we worked, or what we chose didn't work out too hot. Uh, we distributed our product out of a warehouse in Omaha, Nebraska. 
And in the winter, I guess the warehouse wasn't heated very well, so a bunch of the adhesive holding the labeling for our products failed because of the cold. Uh, I remember sitting in that cold warehouse for a couple of days, opening up hundreds of boxes to see which tins had issues with the labels because we didn't want to ship something with a label that had fallen off. So, uh, oh, the joy of startups. So, uh, you know, I really did enjoy my time with Razor. It was a, a crazy adventure, but a lot of fun in the process. I have lots of stories from that time. Uh, we had a lot of involvement in professional computer gaming at that time. So uh, maybe some of those stories will be uh, for future Q&As. Uh, you know, I took the, uh, the pen well to my local pen club meeting this past week, uh, and the feedback I received from folks was very positive. Uh, a lot of folks were very intrigued by it and thought it was a great idea. Uh, the Penwell is available on the Penwell site. I'll put a link below in the notes. The, uh, the walnut model sells for $49. Uh, this aluminum here is $59, and then there is a brass version at $89. Uh, and I feel that those are reasonable prices for the materials and what you receive. Uh, as I mentioned, as with any new company, you need to address and readdress a number of aspects of your business. Uh, recently, Dan made the choice to lower the price point by $25 on each of his models. Uh, they were previously higher, uh, which in my opinion was a good decision. I, I had felt they were a bit priced on the high side. But in a move that was uh, nice to see, uh, Dan is actually offering $25 credits towards a next purchase for any customer who had bought a Penwell at the previous higher price. You know, he didn't need to do that, but it goes a long way to show uh, the type of business that he would like to run. It was a nice gesture. Uh, and it's gestures like that, which will help businesses make a connection with their customers. So thanks again to Dan for providing this Penwell for review. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, it is a functional product which performs as advertised. Uh, plus, it, it looks kind of cool just sitting on your desk. Uh, I hope it's a venture that is successful. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.